what I want you to help me with is to have a look quickly at where you created, constructed your tables for each of the three that I gave you. Go look at those tables. Thank you. And for this first one, which was made up of the triangles just adding on to each other, what were the three numbers you had for the number of matchsticks in these shapes? What was the first number? You can even just see it. It was three and then? Six, six and then? Nine. And then you worked out the next one would be? Twelve. Twelve and then fifteen and so on, right? So in each case, we determined that the number of matchsticks was the shape number multiplied by three. So I can write that simply as 3s. Fantastic. Now for this next one, it got a little more complicated. We modified it because you noticed that the numbers were a little bit different. What was your first number for this shape? Eight. Eight. And then that was followed by? Fourteen. And then? Twenty. And then? Twenty-six was what you probably calculated. Okay. Now, what I hope you noticed was, and I'm going to highlight it for you, so just look up for a second because I want you to see me actually drawing this off. When you said, okay, for my number of matchsticks here, right, I hope you noticed that what was crucial was the common difference between each of the terms. Here you grew by 3 every time. That's why we had 3 times s. In this case, you're growing by... What are you growing by? It, it's 6, isn't it? And you can see, watch me draw in. Here's 1, 2... Three, four, five, six new matchsticks that you had to add to turn from shape one to shape two. And you did the same thing from shape two to shape three. So that's why I hope you worked out the rule was 6s, m equals 6s plus two. plus two. Because if you don't have that plus two here, all of your numbers are off by the wrong amount. Okay, now, very last one here. Who's written down their numbers for this one? I mean, we started with three. What was the next one? Seven. Seven. That's, that's a weird looking three. What's the next one? Twelve? And then did anyone work out what the next one would be? Eighteen. Dot, dot, dot. Now, the issue here, and the reason why I didn't have you create the rule for this one is, unlike with these, right, where you've got a common difference every time, three or six, the difference here keeps changing. Did you notice that? What's the difference between shape one and shape two? It's four. The difference between shape two and shape three? Five. So hold on, these guys are going up and up and up, right? Now, we do have maths to articulate what's going on here. It's a little more complicated. And importantly, when we were to take these values, if we took our values for S, the number of shapes, and M, the number of matches, if we were to draw these on a graph, which is what we're going to be moving into, um, you wouldn't get a straight line of numbers. That's why we call these linear patterns. That's something we're going to explore mostly early next week, but I wanted to give you a bit of a teaser for why we introduced this unusual word. Um, some of you have already finished doing your extra shape, but some of you haven't. We're going to be checking that first thing. That's, that's your homework to finish your new shapes. We want to see what the patterns look like and then see what the rule is that you come up for each one. Let's to the last one because we know that's a bit tricky. Okay. Um, say that again, sorry. So we'd love you to have an extra one that's simple, like this, an extra one that's a bit trickier, that's modified, like this, and then an extra one that it's difficult to come up with a rule for. Even though you all can tell me what the next shape looks like, it's hard to describe the algebra for it, at least a bit trickier. Okay, so you'll need three patterns of your own.